Max, let's go to the hotline and let's bring in the guru of Texas high school football. You know him. You love him. He is the Emmy Award winning co-host on High School Scoreboard Live and the radio play-by-play voice of the Texas Longhorns. It is Craig Way. Craig, happy Wednesday. Happy Red River Wednesday to you. Happy, what is it, Red River Hump Day? Uh, (laughs) Whatever, 72 hours inside of 72 hours to kick off there at Fair Park. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. What number Red River is this going to be for you? Do you know? Uh, Let's see. Uh, To to broadcast play-by-play, to be in the broadcast booth, to be at what? Um, Let's just say say to do play-by-play for. We'll keep it as simple as possible. Well, let's see. Uh, I guess it would be my 16th. I missed the one two years ago because that was the day my wife passed away, so mm-hmm. I missed that one. But the uh, so it's I guess it's my 16th in the play-by-play, 26th in the booth because was analyst for 10 years prior to that, and then I think I went to one other one, 27. So I guess 27, something like that. But and and they're always great. They're, I, they're fun. They're I, a lot of fun. I know you're going to have Shay, You're going to be on with Shayon Jayaraja, our college football insider on the Republic of Football, talking about Red River. But um, so I won't. I won't ruin it too much. But um, it is nice to have this game mean something again, right? Like it's been a couple of years since it's really had that pop with both teams ranked. Uh, it seems to me that as a neutral, it's just nice to have this game mean something again. How about? Six years since both teams went into the game ranked, and that, of course, largely on QT, not on Oklahoma uh, for that. Uh, So, yeah, you know, that's one of those deals where folks like to say things like uh, uh, the the Big 12 is better and college football is better when when, uh, Texas and and Oklahoma are both uh, relevant on the national stage and stuff like that. Now, I could probably – introduce you to a few fans and people connected with other Big 12 schools that say, yeah, it doesn't matter to us whether they are or not. But mm-hmm. but from the national perspective, I think folks feel that it's better when both teams are hitting that point and playing well uh, and, and are you know nationally relevant, so to speak. And so, yeah, I, I think all of that applies this year. Let's get back into high school football. I know that you were uh, off in the, uh, the thriving, bustling metropolis of Manhattan, Kansas, on uh, last week. But, uh, the I know... heart of the Flint Hills region. <laughs> last, know, yes. But I know you were locked in on Texas high school <clears throat> football as well. Uh, now that you look back at the week that was in week five, um, is there one or two storylines that emerged from the action that we saw last week uh, that have you uh, that that are going to stick with you from from this past week? I, I do think that the uh, you know we talked quite a bit about the interclassification matchups last week, and we and we've got another great we got two really good ones this week in China Lexington and mm-hmm. and Childress Munster. We have we have two of those, uh, a couple more of those. Uh, upcoming so uh, you know those are uh, those are exciting to see I don't I don't think there's any doubt about that but um, you know now that we're kind of getting headlong into district play there there's a couple things that stood out to me one that uh, early on you, you, we know the usual suspects are, who are really really good and then and then two there are some districts that I'll be honest with you Tap, but I, I said this on my radio show this morning here in the Austin area we're six weeks, five going into six weeks into the season. I have no idea mm-hmm. in a couple of these districts, not only who's going to win the district title, but who all four playoff teams are going to be. I'll give you an example. 13-5A Division Two. You mm-hmm. tell me. You tell me who the four playoff teams are. Brennan was a preseason uh, choice to win the district. They're one in three, and they come off losing to Cedar Creek. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, you, you tell me who are the, who are the four teams that are coming out of that district and going to the postseason. I, I can't right now. No. Um, yeah, that's one thing that comes to mind. And then the other thing, and you know, I was piggybacking the research that you had done hmm. that you tweeted out a couple of days ago. And uh, that's the, uh, I love the nerdy number that, what did you say? 385 schools are on a buy this week. Yeah, it's around so there. It's, Thirty-one point four percent of UIL programs not playing, which left us with what just a just a scant 
uh, 509 who are playing this week. So I, I've, <laughs> I did some follow-up on that because the, uh, the concept or the, the uh, phenomenon that is the district-wide buy mm-hmm. has started to fascinate me because this year, this has never happened before, Seth, where we have seen as many districts take a powder for the entire week to tell everybody, in the, yeah, we're off this week. Uh, it's the most we've ever seen. And I thought, why is that? And, and I think it traces back to what we said was going to be one of the big things going into the season, 5A, mm-hmm. with, the, with, the, with the preseason split. At, at, out of all of that, in, in looking at district buys, district wide, in 6A and 5A alone, 15 districts are taking the week off. Jeez. 15 in 6A and 5A alone. So uh, it's kind of it's kind of amazing to consider that you know it, first of all it takes some creative scheduling, mm-hmm. um, and you're better served if you have an 18 district, but that's not always the case. 27 6 eight, you've got 10 schools in there, and they're all out eating wings this week. You know, <laughs> I mean, how you figure? Yeah. So th- th- that I think is and, and I was visiting with Todd Dodds, the Westlake coach, back because Westlake has a week off, but they're just you know the. They're the they're the outlier this week with the week off in in twenty um, five six a, and I said does it does it benefit schools uh, to the, for the entire district to take the week off? He said he liked it if you could make it happen, but it's too difficult to do, and of course it's impossible to do in a seventeen district. You have to rotate buys around. So I just thought that was one of the things that leaked off the page. You have fifteen districts. In 6A and 5A combined, where the entire district has an open date this week. He's Craig Ways, a Texas High School Football Hall of Famer, joining us every Wednesday here on Texas Football Today. Get involved in the conversation, hashtag TF Today. Uh, but just because there's this many buys, Craig, doesn't mean that we aren't, we don't, we're not stacked with really, really intriguing matchups. Maybe not the kind of matchups, uh, you know, that we're going to get second or third round of the playoffs or anything like that, but. We do have a number of really, really interesting matchups uh, coming up here in Week Six, um, both from a both some non-district and then other, I think, de facto district championship games. Um, is there one game right now? No, you know what? I like playing this game. No, 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 no. We're gonna do this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you three games. Three games. Okay. You gotta pick one. You gotta pick one to okay. attend. You can either go to and and this is attend attend. Let's say attend as a fan. I think that's an important. Okay. Thing. In other words, stand in line, get the get the uh, get the uh, heated up nacho cheese <laughs> yes. on the chips. Do that. The uh, the uh, warm hot water hot dog where the dogs have been soaking there. <laughs> get that, and then get a uh, uh, get a uh, soft drink, a big old soft drink where there's positively too much CO2 in it. One hundred percent. It's a very it's a it's an over it's an over uh, <laughs> it's an over amplified soda. So, questions: Are you going to Small school matchup between Munster and Childress. Are you going to medium school matchup between West Rusk and Gladewater? Or are you going to big school matchup between Belton and Temple? Three different parts of the state and three, I think, three very different atmospheres, too. Because for me, I've been telling anybody, well, listen, Belton and Temple will be the best atmosphere in the state this week. It'll be... It'll be insane. It may not be the best game. So from your perspective, how do you parse all of that? Yeah, in fact, I've even told Texas fans, hey, if you're, you're driving up to Dallas on a Friday night to get ready for Saturday morning, why don't you stop off and catch that one? Because mm-hmm. that, 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 that's kind of a blood feud oh, yeah. a bit. <laughs> so, so, in other words, we're, we're leaving out Shiner-Lexington, you're saying? We're leaving out Shiner-Lexington. We're leaving okay. out – We're leaving. hey, we're leaving out a matchup of defending 4A state champs in Carthage Pleasant yep. Grove. So, I'm going to make yes, you choose between Munster Childress, Belton Temple, and West Rusk Gladewater. Well, only because – it has the district implications to it. I would go with West Rush Glade mm-hmm. Water. Uh, I, I, I want to see how for real, and for real I mean on a statewide level, mm-hmm. how for real both of those teams are. Glade Water beaten Pleasant Grove, obviously. West Rusk has, has scarcely been challenged. They've looked good and come off the win over Mineola. I want to see who is for real in terms of 3A, who can be a legitimate contender for a 3A title, and I think we might get an answer out of that game. Uh, you know, Childress Munster is, is probably, to me, if I were just looking at it, the most enticing matchup mm-hmm. for it. You have a state ranked 2A and a state ranked 3A, and you get to see, see how that goes. 
But we can also peel back and wait on, uh, uh, probably wait on Childress and Canadian. And I don't think the Canadian uh, Childress perspective matchup was stained that much by Canadian's loss uh, over the weekend. So, yeah, I, I think that uh, probably I would still go with Gladewater and West Rusk. And finally, Craig, we know you will be at the State Fair of Texas on uh, Saturday. Will you eat a corny dog at the game? I usually eat one. Uh, I usually eat one after the game. Mm. Sometimes, if I didn't have time to uh, have breakfast because it's an 11 a.m. kickoff, my son is my spotter, and I'll send him down. Um, you know, with whatever a fist full of cash to get a fist full of uh, tickets to get me one, and I can try to get one in there before. You know, I'm really kind of wondering whether I should go with that or the deep fried chicken tetrazzini parmesan <laughs> or the or the cotton candy tacos. You know, all of that's going into there. But I will tell you, if I if I eat any of that stuff, it'll be after the game because I can never get through the game if I eat that stuff before kickoff. No, no question about that. No, that's putting that's putting your job in jeopardy at that point. That's that's just that would be just irresponsible. Yeah, it'd be irresponsible to everybody who has to share the booth with me, too. <laughs> He's Craig Way. He's the Texas High School Football Hall of Famer. See his fine work Friday night on High School School Board Live on Fox Sports Southwest. And then, of course, tune in 11 a.m. for Texas and OU on the IMG Texas or Radio Texas Longhorns Radio Network. Craig, appreciate your time, my friend. I will see you Friday night. See you in the studio.